There are concerns about low awareness and control of hypertension in Africa. Fewer than a third of people living with high blood pressure in the Africa region are on treatment, and only about 12% have the condition under control. That's according to the World Health Organization. World Hypertension Day was observed yesterday under the theme, measure your blood pressure accurately, control it, and live longer. Now the study shows that diagnosis, care, and control of this life-threatening condition are constrained in Africa. Let's bring in Dr. Prebo Barongo from the World Health Organization's Regional Office for Africa. And he joins us virtually from Brazzaville in Congo. Uh, doctor, thank you so much for your time this evening. Is it uh, safe to say that hypertension is almost a silent and slow killer that really should be picked up much earlier in the lives of, of Africans in various regions to try and prevent it from becoming a very serious issue later on in life? Yes, uh, thank you very much. Uh, good evening, and thanks for having me on your program. Um, hypertension, like you rightly described, is a slow killer, is a silent killer, and um, the figures from the African region are not really very encouraging. Like you had pointed out, um, countries in the region have one of the highest prevalence of um, hypertension in adults. In some countries, it's actually as almost as high as one in three to one in two adults um, having the uh, raised blood pressure. But that's really not the concern. The concern also is that of this high prevalence, only about um, only about 20% of, of them are on treatment, um, mm -hmm. meaning that they are taking medicines to control their, their, their condition. And of this 20%, only about half of them actually have it under control. So we have about 11% of adults with hypertension being under control, which is much, much, much lower than the global average of adults with hypertension under control. Um, so it, it, it's, a, it, it's, it, it's not a very encouraging news for the region, um, and more so because um, cardiovascular diseases, which are diseases of the heart and blood vessels, are the number one um, killer of um, uh, adults in our region. So. Um, in terms of NCD mortalities, cardiovascular diseases come number one. Um, hypertension is a key risk factor for, and it's preventable. It's a key risk factor for cardiovascular diseases, and we're not really doing as much as we should about the condition. What is some of your research and data telling you about what the makeup is of this um, average person who should be diagnosed with hypertension much earlier in life but is not getting that diagnosis? Um, are they being found in rural areas or in urban areas? Is it in areas where um, the diet is based more on meat and starch, where um, the lifestyle is not balanced? Is, is it just um, a, an issue of, of malnutrition as well, as well as stress and, and trauma? What does what some of your survey and your, your research tell you about who who the people are that we should be targeting um, uh, with more awareness and education. Thank you very much for that. Um, so hyper the risk factors for hypertension are actually some of the risk factors for non-communicable diseases, which includes things like unhealthy diets, that's consuming diets that are um, high in uh, sugars, salts, and uh, fats, um, unhealthy diets, as well as a lack of physical activity, uh, being living a more sedent sedentary lifestyle, um, harmful use of alcohol, as well as uh, tobacco use. You also rightly mentioned that stress is also a contributor to um, uh, hypertension and, and NCDs in general, but hypertension specifically. So um, all this is because gradually our lifestyles have, are changing. Um, yeah, as you are aware, we call these things commercial determinants of health. Um, fast, fast food is becoming the fad these days. Um, in most countries, um, sugar sweetened beverages are available. So this is leading to not malnutrition now, but overnutrition. So um, obesity is becoming a, mm. a, a key issue in across most countries in our region because um, it's um, 
of, of because of these factors that I've highlighted. Um, so that's really those, those are the key drivers um, of hypertension uh, and non-communicable diseases. And so we need to do uh, things about this. And there are, there are key things that can be done in terms of modifying behaviors to ensure that we adopt healthy lifestyle uh, to avoid having hypertension. Um, how important and key is um, better communication, education and information to um, stem this scourge of, of hypertension in these key areas? Yes, thank you very much. Um, there is low level of awareness coupled with uh, perceived low risk of hypertension in, across every, uh, most people in, in, in the region. And that is because, like we had this highlighted at the beginning, Hypertension is a silent killer. Okay. Oftentimes, there are no symptoms that is um, that can be attributed to hypertension. It's only when you have complications beginning to set in that you have those signs and symptoms that is associated with the damage to the organs, which will include eyes, the heart, uh, the brain, and all the other vital organs in the body. So because it's not usually... Um, with any symptom, um, there's a low perception of risk and there's a low a level of awareness of the need to check your blood pressure, which is what the theme for this year's um, commemoration is. Monitor your blood pressure. Uh, that's, the, that's the only way to know if, you're, if um, you have hypertension or not. That's the really monitor your blood pressure. Uh, and it's not, it's cheap. It's not... Uh, it's not invasive, it is convenient, and it's available, it's widely available in most health facilities. Doctor, on an anecdotal level, is one of the problems here that issues around blood pressure is often seen as something for people to worry about in um, their older years, people over the age of 50, and in families and communities it's seen as something that they need to worry about and not younger people as young as 30 years old. Do you think that's part of the issue? Yes, it, it, it is part of the issue. Um, if you recall, um, like I mentioned, we are gradually um, deviating from our normal way of living and diet, mm. diet has changed. Um, we are becoming more urbanized and you know, urban li living has its own stress. Um, so stress coupled with unhealthy diets and um, that is fueling the obesity, uh, I'll call it pandemic that we are beginning to have now, um, is making people um, get hypertension at a younger age. So um, it's no longer the classical, you know, um, people above 50 that you have hypertension. You have, you are, we are beginning to have this hypertension um, in much, much younger people. And I suppose if this continues to be an issue, it will put even more pressure on already overburdened health, um, health departments and health facilities across the continent in a few decades' time. Yes, definitely it will. And it's, we are beginning to see it now. In most tertiary facilities I have visited, um, the stroke ward, that ward where people with stroke um, and, um, um, and the other cardiovascular diseases effect is usually very, very, very populated. So this, we are already beginning to see the effect. Also, um, cardiovascular disease, like I mentioned, is the, is the major um, NCD cause of death across all countries in the region. But the news also is that um, most of these deaths are occurring in people that are less than 70 years. So we call this uh, premature mortality. And hypertension is actually a key contributor to this premature mortality from cardiovascular diseases. Okay, we're going to leave it there. Thank you so much for that insight. That's Dr. Prebo Barango. He is with the WHO's regional office for Africa, joining us live there from Brazzaville. We thank